Uh, welcome back to Alley University. Proof State on the road today. The Bobcats coming into the game at 1-6 against the 3-4 and four Avila Eagles. Both teams ready to take the field. And, Daryl, I didn't get the chance. We were working on some technology things here. I didn't see who won the toss here. No, and I didn't either. And also, uh, while we're filling in times, I, I didn't see who won the toss as well. But Nebraska's up 21-7 over Rutgers. Kansas State's 13-0 over Texas. And West Virginia trailing Oklahoma 27-22. It looks like Bruce State's going to receive. So back deep for the Bobcats will be Logan Babin. Let's see if Malik Pittman joins him. So he's been returning. It is Malik Pittman. Approaching the ball for the Eagles will be Andy Myers, a junior kicker out of St. Joseph. He's out of Savannah High School. They're on the Savannah Savages, just north of St. Joe. He's a left-footed kicker. He approaches the ball. Kick is high in the air. Payton's going to settle under it at about the five-yard line to the 10, the 15, the 20, outside the 25. Fights his way to the 30, out to about the 33-yard line. So the Bobcats will take over first down and 10 on this opening possession on about their own 33-yard line. A little bit lower than normal for our broadcast this afternoon. Uh, we will try to paint as clear a picture as we can. Opening drive for the Bobcats. Drake split to the near side. Merrill is in the slot. The Bobcats are going east to west. Left to right on your dial. Claw fans the ball underneath in a big hole for Aaron Smith. He's out for the first down, out to about the 44-yard line, gain of 11 on the play. Abelas, Miles Eubanks in on the tackle. So it'll be first down for the Bobcats on their very first play. Yeah, Aaron Smith, that does put him over 300 yards now for the season, probably about probably about 310 from where they spot the ball. Splits to the near side is Coughlin, single back. Standing next to Klontz in the pencil, he turns, he hands the ball to him, and Aaron Smith hit right at the line of scrimmage. That was K.C. Mormon, the defensive lineman out of Troy Buchanan High School. So a gain of nothing on the play. They got second down and 10 for the Bobcats. Yeah, Dr. Mentioning two minutes ago, we're lower, and you were speaking in elevation compared to the field when you said lower, I hope. But yeah, yeah we're, we're not too much higher than the, the helmets of the players on the field. And certainly not that the people standing in front of us are in the bleacher. <laughs> Second down and 10 for the Bobcats on their own 44-yard line. Again, I'm just so single back. Aaron Smith on play action has a big to him. Quads rolling out, looking to the near side, and it's running out of real estate for the Bobcats. It's going to be Merrill. And good coverage there for uh, Avila. But Jake Merrill, the freshman out of Elkhorn, ran out. It's going to be third down and, and 10 for the Bobcats. Jeff or Zepp Louie, excuse me, Zepp out of Liberty, Missouri, right up the road in northeast Kansas City, home of William Jewell College. William Jewell used to be in the hack until Prue State took their place uh, three years ago. Jewell moved up to Division II at that time, and Prue got that slot in the Heart of America Athletic Conference. Third down and 10 for the Bobcats. Clots back to pass, steps up in the pocket. He's going to run. He's to midfield, going to be short of the first down by about a yard. So on the tackle for Avila was Anthony West, a sophomore linebacker out of Lutheran North High School in Florissant, Missouri. And the Bobcats are going to punt here on their first possession after getting a first down. They're at the 48. Now, the wind is, is either variable or occasionally does come out of the east, but it's less than five miles an hour. So it has very little effect on this punt. Great Connery in the punt, of course. Cody Sullivan injured his hand last week, so Conrad did the punting. He punts it away. He's going to bounce it about the 15 and bounce out of bounds about the 10-yard line. He was kicking it away from Josh Lewis. So the Bobcats pin the Eagles back deep, and Avila gets their first shot at the ball. 12.57 remaining in the first quarter, no score. Yeah, it'd be just about a 40-yard punt. Uh, couldn't have been too much better than that, much better than going into the end zone. Now the 38-yarder, they snapped that ball from the 48, and just inside, they spotted it at the 10. So it'll be first down and 10 for the Eagles. 
they will spread it out and throw the ball and pop it inside. No backs in the backfield as Jordan Radbaugh, the redshirt freshman out of Thornton, Colorado, now looks to his right, throws to his right, overthrows it, and almost intercepted by the Bobcats. It was intended on the wing to Lewis. He couldn't get his hands on it. It went up in the air, and Jordan Stephan almost picked that one off for the Cats. Josh Lewis, only five foot seven, Daryl, and Radbaugh threw that a little bit high to him. Same formation, trips to the near side. No back in the backfield with Radbaugh. Now a little swing pass, and it is dropped. That was intended for Alan Jackson. I almost wonder if John Gregor got a little bit of a hand on that as he was rushing back for the quarterback. Looks like maybe his right hand might have touched the ball just a little bit and sent it a little bit low uh, for the wide receiver. Davion Sullivan split to the near side. In the slot is Robert Johnson. In the slot even closer to the quarterback is Alan Jackson in the trips formation. Two receivers to the far side, including Lewis. And back to pass is Radbaugh, and it falls incomplete. Good coverage on the play for the Bobcats. That was uh, Horvath, David Horvath, knocking that one down. So Avila will punt. And again, we talked about the punter for Avila, who has been erratic this year. He's had kicks over 60 yards, but only averages 36. So we'll see. Schluka and Fabin are standing right at midfield. As the kicker for Avila stands in the end zone. And it's a high snap, gets it down, and oh, Ben Watkins put some pressure on it. Fluke is going to have it at the own 44. He's back in midfield to the 50, and is hit there and driven back. And driving him back for Avila was Ishmael Zabahula. Say that three times quickly. <laughs> Yeah, he's a Ryder Lee, son of Missouri. I'm glad some relatives love him. So, punt, punt, first two possessions for each team. First possession for each team. And the Bobcats now will start right at midfield. Malik Pittman split to the near side. They line up in the I formation. Aaron Smith has it faked to him. They pitch it out to Spearman. Spearman, he had a gain of about four down to the 46 yard line. Before he was met by a flock of eagles. Yeah, Spearman comes in today with 158 uh, yards on the season. He averages 6.1 yards every time he touches the football from the last guy. 12 13 remaining. Yeah, well, they're out on the field. Just look in the back. We're in a residential area in the southern part of Kansas City, and it looks like the colors are just about to peak down. There are a lot of reds and oranges uh, up in the neighborhoods here. We go into the 12 minute mark here in the first quarter. No score. Proust State at the Avila 46, second down and six. They're in the I formation. Aaron Smith has it handed to him by Klontz on the read, and he's down to about the 41. It's going to be third down and one. Nice run by Aaron Smith. Tackle for Avila. That time by Casey Mormon, the sophomore defensive lineman. Yeah, Aaron, third down and one for the Cats. Aaron Smith was up right at the line of scrimmage, but it was able to break away from the tackle uh, to make short yardage for third down. Third down, they're going to call it a short two, long one. Balls between the 41 and the 42. They need to make it to the 40. I formation, two tight ends set for the Bobcats. Fonts calls his count, hands to Terrence. Actually pulls it out. He's in himself. He's on the run. He's to the 30. He's to the 20. Down inside the 10 to the six yard line. Marshall Fonts read the option perfectly, executed it all the way down inside the 10. It'll be first down and goal for the Cats. First trip to the Blue Zone this afternoon for the Bobcat offense. They're going to spot it at the seven-yard line. Marshall Klontz, a fifth-year senior from Auburn, Washington, getting the start this afternoon. Previous to that rush, four yards was his longest rush of the season. Spearman dots the eye. He's behind Aaron Smith. Under center is Marshall Klontz. Klontz turns the ball, gives it to Smith, and he is down to the two, the one. Touchdown! Bobcats! Aaron Smith was hit at about the five-yard line. He dragged three Eagles into the end zone, and the Cats are up six to nothing early in the first quarter. 
And that just seemed to be a lot of determination on his part to just keep driving to get that ball into the end zone. So in comes Conry to attempt the extra point. Greg Conry, the junior from Harlan, Iowa, making the snap will be caught. It's Alan Barnes, the snapper. Snap's good. The placement's good. The kick is up, and it is good. 10.37 remaining in the opening quarter. Blue State up 7 nothing. We'll be back after this timeout. Listen to Bobcat Football on P103 Sports. If you... Welcome back to Apple University. Crew State strikes first on their second possession. They go 50 yards in five plays. Aaron Smith taking it in seven yards for the touchdown. Caps up 7 0 over the Apple University Eagles. Yeah, they're calling Marshall Clunz's run 35 yards. They got the Bobcats in scoring position. Conry kicks it into the end zone. Josh Lewis is going to take a knee. And Apple will start at the 25. Somehow they ran a second off there. 10.37 before <laughs> the game. Second with a touchback. Uh, so, Avila starts on their own 25. First down and 10. They had zero yards in their first possession. So that's zero average for plays. This time, they're in the two-back offense. Two receivers split to the near side. Josh Lewis and Alan Jackson. I haven't seen Kellen Burke yet, their leading rusher. It's flipped out. Actually, that is Burke. Flipped out to him. She has Robert Johnson on a little bit of a reverse screen. Taken out of bounds by Briar Burr. Just short of the first down. They're going to spot it actually at the 33-yard line. Gain of eight. It'll be second down and two. Hard count. Bobcats jump off sides. Free play. And pass was intended down the sideline for Davion Sullivan. But uh, there was a penalty flag on the play on the hard count by Jordan Radbach. They had the first penalty of the game this afternoon. The Bruce State has been very disciplined through the year with very few penalties. So Avila gets the first down on the penalty, their first first down of the afternoon. You know, he first and 10 to the Eagles, the ball in their own 38 yard line. Yeah, Briar Burr on that tackle on the last play. Um, he has 38 tackles on the season. He's been gone for a couple of weeks with the injuries. Great to have him back. Josh Lewis split to the near side. Split to the far side is Davion Sullivan. Two backs by Jordan Radbaugh. Takes the handoff. Actually gives it to Johnson. Johnson out to about the 40. to be a gain of a couple. Shane Lloyd with a nice tackle for the Bobcats. Going to be second down. They're going to call it eight. They have seven on the board, but it's eight. They need to get to the 48-yard line, and the ball is just short of the 40. So second down and eight as we go into the 10-minute mark here in the first quarter. Four wide receivers to the near side as they overload. No backs. And now Jax goes into motion, slipped out to Robert Johnson. He's going to be taken down a couple yards short of the the first down. That was... Darbell Carlin's on the tackle. The third down and two for the Eagles. And right up to the line of scrimmage again. Again with four wide receivers to the near side for the Eagles. Now they stand up, look for the play call from the sideline as they see what the Bobcat defense is offering. Back to pass as Radbaugh throws it underneath. He has Davion Sullivan. He's got the first down down to the 45. But Bruce State, Shane Lloyd with the tackle. And yeah, it's Shane Lloyd, second tackle of the day, and tackle number 51 for the season. Running the controlled passing game with the spread. Just a little short routes, looking to break something on the Bobcats. Allen Jackson in the slot on the near side. Josh Lewis splits to the near side. Jackson now goes into motion. Now there's four receivers split to the far side, and Jackson comes back in motion again to the near side. Radball looking all the way at Lewis. 
has a receiver down the sideline looking back into the sun. He can't corral it. Bounces away from him. Darbell Collins knocks it to the ground. He was a couple of yards, a couple of steps beyond Darbell, but could not haul it in. It'll be second down and 10 with the ball at the 45-yard line of the Bobcat. And that was a great play by Darbell Collins, uh, the sophomore out of St. Louis. He uh, was able to reach up and get his hand on that ball and uh, wasn't allowed to be a complete pass. 8.45 to go, first quarter. Cats up 7 to nothing. That ball hands the ball off to Allen Jackson. He's got a couple in the middle, but not much. Maybe two and a late hit there, but no call from Josh Lewis on Darbell Collins as they got into it. For the Bobcats, Elijah Hawkins in on the tackle. It'll be third down and seven, and right back at the line of scrimmage is Avila. Eighth play of the drive. Third down and seven. The ball at the 42-yard line. No backs. Five receivers in the pattern. Redbaugh throws it underneath. Johnson has it. He has the first down, down to about the 30-yard line. Yeah, Bruce State was playing, playing fairly deep there, and a lot of space right right beyond the line of scrimmage where the pass was complete. Elijah Hawkins with the tackle. It'll be first down and 10 for the Eagles at the Bobcat 28-yard line. Red Bob, again, empty backfield. Trips to the far side. Due to the near Avila in their white pants, purple jerseys, purple helmets, Bobcats with Bobcat blue helmets and pants and white jerseys. Blue numbers here this afternoon. Avila wearing the home dark uniforms. Ball is handed inside to Allen Jackson. He's got a hole, and he's down inside the 20. It'll be another first down, down to about the 17-yard line. You know, one thing about uh, being down low and close to the field, uh, at least we can read the numbers this week. Last week at Benedictine, as far as way as we were, it, it was very difficult to read them. Now they move a lineman out, split them, and they're going to run a screen pass. To Lewis, he breaks a tackle at the 15. He's down to about the 10-yard line. They brought a tackle out. Split him wide. Had two blockers in front of Lewis who got the pass. The ball down to about the 6-yard line. It'll be first down and goal. The ball at the 6. Jackson into motion and now penalty flag before the snap. The legal procedure is going to be called on the Eagles. That'll back up to the 11, where it'll be first and goal there. 7-14 remaining. Open quarter. Proust State up 7-0. Avila first down and goal with the ball on the Proust State 11. Left tackle split out two plays ago. Colin Bauman at 6-1, 270. This time, five wide receivers trips to the far side, two to the near side. Red Bob back to pass, and he is sacked back at about the 17-yard line. What a read by John Drager, who blew through untouched and just buried the freshman. They're back at about the 17. It'll be second down and goal at the ball at the 17-yard line. Yeah, John Drager, in some sources, was a preseason All-American for the Bobcats, and that was a great sack. It actually took him back uh, – Marginally out of field goal territory. Absolutely untouched. Back to pass is Radbaugh looking to the near side, has a receiver and overthrows him. It'll be third down and goal from the 17. He was looking there for Josh Lewis, senior from Three Point, Illinois. Daryl, he's a transfer from Upper Iowa University. Do you remember who the head football coach is at Upper Iowa? Is that where Shea is now? Tom Shea. They're the Fighting Peacocks in Fayette, Iowa. Yeah, the closest receiver on that play was Darbell Collins. It was the closest player to where that ball hit the bound. Third, so, third down and goal. Four receivers to the far side, but throwing to the near side is Red Ball looking for Lewis in the end zone, and he drops it. It was triple coverage on Josh Lewis. Darbell Collins was there, as was Jordan Steffen. As Briar Burr, excuse me, Briar Burr. And now Avila. We'll look at a 35-yard field goal. Again, the kicker, Boyd, or Danny Spencer, excuse me, Danny Spencer, the kicker. He's perfect on the season, 5-5 five of five with a long of 40. Placement's good. The kick is up. It's long enough. It is good. 6.09 remaining in the first quarter. Crew State leads at 7-3. We'll be back with more after this. This is the Bobcat Football on B103 Sports.
Welcome back to Avalon University in southern Kansas City, just east of State Line. We are on the Missouri side, just south of I-435. And, oh, I'm sorry, Nebraska up now over Rutgers, 34 to 10, and K-State over Texas, 13 to nothing. So here comes the kick. It's a high kick. Going back is Taven inside the end zone. He's going to take it out. He's to the 10, the 15. Good block there, but up to about the 22 is all the farther he's going to get. He had a little second effort and spun around and maybe got out to about the 23, almost the 24-yard line is where the official's going to place it. Wyatt Beebe, a freshman linebacker from Nixon, Missouri. Down by Branson gets the tackle. And the Bobcats will start first down and 10 on their own 24-yard line. 6-0-1, opening quarter, Cats up 7-3, going back on the attack. On under center, they're in the I formation, Trombley dot CI. He gets a handoff left side. He's got a little bit of running room across the 25, out to about the 26. Give him a couple on first down. It'll be second down and eight for the Cats. Well, Nebraska made the extra point now, 35-10 over Rutgers. So welcome to all you people who have been listening to that blowout. Drew State here, 7-3. 5.35 remaining in the opening quarter. Cats taking their time. 10 seconds in the huddle. As they break the huddle, 7 seconds approaching the line of scrimmage. Under center's clocks are in the eye, turns around. And penalty flag before the snap. See what the call here is. Illegal procedure against the Cats. Not sure they were set the full count. You know, when Dan Hansen used to coach at Warp, at um, Waldorf, they were a junior college, and they ran an offense, Darrell, where every play they sprinted to the line of scrimmage, set for a count, and then snapped the ball. They did that all game until they got to about a crucial third two early in the fourth quarter. They would come to the line of scrimmage and just stop in the defensive jump off every <laughs> single time. They would come down and play the Husker freshman. I went to a few of those games when uh, Coach Hanson, or President Hanson, was Coach Hanson at Waldorf in those days. Second like down from long for the Cats. Aaron Smith has it back past the original line of scrimmage up to about the 26. It's going to be third down and about eight for the Cats. Bruce State. On the last drive, went 50 yards in five plays. You take that 7 to nothing lead, and then Avila kept the ball a long time. 14 plays, started at their own 25. They got the 35-yard field goal at the end of that drive. Now the Cats looking at third down and eight. On their own 26-yard line, back to pass is Marshall Klontz, the senior. It's a screen to Smith. He's to the 30. He's got the first down at the 35, up to the 40. 45, great throw and execution by the Bobcats. All the way out to the 25. It's a gain of 19 on the play. On third down and eight, and the Cats move the chains. And there was some great blocking downfield uh, for the first day Bobcats, but a lot of that on the ability to cut by Aaron Smith. And that's first down, I mean, yeah, first down number three for Peru State. Dylan Bruggeman playing again today out in front of that, as was Hayden Krautner. First down and 10 for the Cats. Ball handed to Smith, and he's got still on his feet. He's to the 40. He broke a tackle at about the 50 and took it on down to the 40, and it's another first down as the Cats are running tough here this afternoon. Aaron Smith looking good. Yeah, it's really fortunate for Peru State. I've seen plays like that where the whistle's always blown by them, but he was able to break free, spin, and go around the left side and run on down. Uh, for another first state first down. 324 remaining in the first quarter. Cats up 7-3 to three on the move. They started this drive on their own 24. Now at the Avila 40 with the first down. Back to pass is Klontz. Finds his receiver and nice defensive play. That was it. Intended for Coughlin. But on the defense was... Uh, Danny Johnson, freshman. Danny Johnson, the freshman out of Springfield, Missouri, Park Hill High School. 
breaks that pass up intended for Coughlin. And Coughlin also a freshman, one of, um, what, over a dozen today for Bruce State on the 2D? Was it 18? 18 today from the 2D for Bruce State. Eric Morrison Smith with the ball now inside the 35, down to about the 34 yard line. It's going to be third down and about four for the Cats as we go into the three minute mark here in the first quarter. Eric, Eric Morrison Smith, 5'11, 220 pounds. You know, talked about the, the old Pro Prep High School Bob Kittens, the receiving core here, Daryl, like the Bob Kittens. Frank is a sophomore, he's the old man in the receiving core. As you have Merrill's a freshman, Coffin's a freshman, and also uh, the big tight end, uh, Robinson, is a freshman also. Aaron Smith keeps the ball this time. It looked like Marshall Klontz wanted it back. Gets about a yard. It's third down, and, or fourth down and three. And there were five or six Eagles in on that tackle. Yeah, I believe the punt team's coming on. I think for the Bobcats, I don't see the... No holder, so yeah, no holder, so yeah, it looks like the free state will punt. Only punting from the thirty three. So that will really hurt hurt um a punting average having that. Avalon not buying it. They don't have a uh, punt receiver back, a returner back. Nobody beyond four yards. Conry's got it. He is gonna kick it. It's a high punt. Into the end zone, so only a 13-yard net for the Bobcats. Devin Moore was down there. If that punt would have been about two yards shorter, Devin Moore was down in position where he could have downed the ball right outside of the end zone and saved uh, Bruce State about 19 yards. So the Bobcats punt it. Minute 41 remaining in the first quarter. Avila takes over. First and 10 on their own 20-yard line. Avila goes into this drive with five first downs, uh, 58 total yards offense, 3.9 yards per play average. Split backs behind Radbaugh. Now Johnson goes into motion. They flip it to him. Darbell Collins coming up, misses the tackle. Johnson's still on his feet. That's about the 28-yard line before he's taken down by Briar Burr. That was a great tackle by Burr. He caught him by the ankles and flipped him to the ground. A uh, gain of nine. It'll be second down and one. Ball on the 29-yard line. That Harlan, Elijah Hawkins, your middle backer, is now cheating up on the line of scrimmage for the Bobcats is David Orbath. Back to pass. They flip it out to Alan Jackson. He's got the first down out to about the 36-yard line. And Darrell, they, uh, they run that quite a bit. That just little look. Foot pass to the outside screen pass, and they have a blocker out in front. All they want to get is five or six yards, see if they can break it. Then when you start cheating up on that boom, they go deep. We got down another one minute mark now in the first quarter. Trips to the far side. Alan Jackson, the running back, standing next. Now they run the same play to the far side, and receiver. All the way down to the Bobcat 50 yard line. That is Luke Oldham. Yeah, Shade Loin, Shane Lloyd, were able to run him down. Had a bad angle on him to start, but was able to catch up with him, but not before they got to midfield. Not for Avila made midfield. And first day leading 7 to 3. First down and 10 for the Eagles are at the Bobcat, right at the midfield stripe. Look to the near side is Josh Lewis. Four receivers to the far side. They throw it underneath on the screen, and he's got about 10 or 11 more. It's going to be another first down. That was Davion Sullivan. Clock stops to move the chains. Now they started again, 19 and ticking. Trips to the far side. Single receiver to the near side. Well, we started out with three in- consecutive incomplete passes for Avila, but now the a high percentage. Back to pass is Redbaugh looking down the sideline, and Darbell Collins picks it up at the 13-yard line. It was slightly underthrown, but Darbell Collins made a great read, turned around and got it. That's going to end the first quarter. Bruce State leaves it 7-3. to We'll be back with the second quarter after this timeout. You listen to Bobcat Football on B103 Sports. How many times?
Tommy Wilson on first down of the second quarter runs the option, keeps it himself, takes it all the way from the 14-yard line out to the 38. So Tommy Wilson getting his first action this afternoon. He's a freshman from Wilmar, California. He gets 24 yards on first down. Kansas State, the beginning of the fourth quarter, has a 16-0 lead over Texas. A.J. Floodman split to the near side. Malik Pittman to the far side. And Malik's another one of those freshman receivers. Trombley in motion gets the pitch. He is going to head outside the 40, out to about the 43 or 40 yard, four yard line. He's driven out of bounds there by Malcolm Sesse, freshman defensive back out of Bowie, Maryland. Yeah, that went to the short side of the field, but uh, Joe Hobart threw a good tackle and allowed it for a game to be made on that play. Second down and four for the Bobcats. Ball at the 44-yard line. Again, Tommy Wilson, number 22, double deuces. The freshman from California is back to pass. He finds his receiver, and he drops it. Nate Trombley was wide open in Avila territory. It hit him between the three and the one and fell harmlessly to the ground. Tommy Wilson laid it right on the numbers. So it'll be third down and six. Yeah, just an unusual number for a quarterback. I mentioned that last week. He played a little bit. Um, you know, usually don't see him above above the teams. Third down and four, all at the 44-yard line. Under center is Wilson running the option, gives it to the fullback, Smith, and he doesn't get much, maybe a yard, and the Cats are going to punt it away. That was Eric Morrison Smith. Your your safe Carol when the fullback gets it by saying Smith. Yeah, that's right. And that was Eric Morrison Smith. Yeah. And Conry will come in to punt. Put the last one in the end zone. Almost looked like that one that on that one too, that uh maybe the quarterback wanted to keep the keep the ball in one with it. Josh Lewis standing at his own twenty yard line. Conry will outkick that, I would think. And he does. As Lewis backs up to about the 10, takes it there, cuts to the outside. Schluka misses him, but a bunch of other Bobcats are there. Let's see who's in on that tackle. I believe it was uh, Devin Devin Moore Moore was the first one there. Devin Moore and Elijah Hawkins both there. Schluka did a nice job of turning him inside, just like he was supposed to. Schluka, the freshman from Exeter Milligan. And Avila will start first and 10 at their own 15-yard line. 13-13 13 13 to go here in the second quarter. Cats up 7 0. To the end of the first quarter of my unofficial stats, I have Briar Burr and Shane Lloyd leading it uh, with the Bobcats with tackles on defense. First and 10 for the Eagles. Radbaugh, back to pass, tries to cut it upfield, but he's going to be taken down, maybe right at the line of scrimmage. Elijah Hawkins is there, as is Drager and Brian Bell. So good defense by the Bobcats. Hawkins almost uh, had him back about three or four yards deep, but he was he didn't let go of him, but was able to slow him down on a couple of the Bobcats, so bring him down. Second down and... And for the Eagles. Back to pass, and it's tipped at the line of scrimmage and caught on a diving catch by Davion Sullivan. And a first down for the Eagles out at the 24 yard line. So good defense by the Bobcats, but just didn't get it batted down. Got it up in the air, and Davion Sullivan catches it. But it prevented any yards after the Cats because he had the dive to catch the ball rather than catching it, catching it on the run. First down and 10 for the Eagles on their own 24-yard line. Empty backfield, five receivers. Radball looking to his right now, scrambles, and he's going to be taken down a gain of about a yard on the play. It was Bell and Nevada Harlan in on the tackle that time for the Bobcats. So second down and nine for the Eagles. Yeah, Brian Bell from uh, Imperial, Nebraska. A lot of folks out that way seem to go to Carney or Shadron, but nice to have somebody from out west down on the, for the podcast. Chase County Longhorns back to pass, overthrown, tended for Oldham. 
Eastern Park on the coverage. And Daryl, we talked about that a little bit uh, a few weeks ago. There's actually a Longhorn volleyball player playing for the Bobcats. Oh, is that right? Yeah, oh, Shannon, yeah. Shannon Lever. Who's, uh, oh, that's, yeah. Right. Grand, right. Grandfather was a longtime right. registrar at Free State College, and Dad was a defensive captain here for the Free State Bobcats. So yeah. a couple of Longhorns uh, playing for the Cats. Third down, nine to go. Back to pass is Radbaugh. He's under pressure, and it's batted down by either Drager or Park. I think it was Park that batted it down and have a little punt from Keith in their own territory. And speaking of Imperials, and who's the Catholic school or Bruce State playing, I guess I can say this, our priest that just moved to Indianola came from Imperial. We had him for six, seven years, and now back up in no neighborhood at Empoli at uh, Indianola. So Sullivan in the punt. Luca and Logan Pavin standing on their own 30-yard line. The punt is high. It's going to be Pavin calling the fair catch at the 40, and the Bobcats will start first and 10 on their own 40. 11-27 remaining in the second quarter. Cats up 7-3. So Cody Sullivan, I haven't seen him yet, Daryl. I don't know if he's in uniform today or not. I know he had the hand injury last week, but Jordan Stephan stepping in for him. Yeah, now it's in the early in the fourth quarter, it's now uh, 35-17 Nebraska, and it's, the fourth quarter is just beginning. First down and 10, Tommy Wilson, back in at quarterback, hands the ball to Aaron Smith. Smith gets maybe two in the middle of that Avalid defensive line. Bottom of the pile there for the Eagles was Anthony West, the sophomore out of Florissant, Missouri. Lutheran North High School. Second down and eight. Trombley goes out. And second down and eight for the Cats. Again, ball is 42 yards. I need to get to the midfield stripe. High formation. And a four seconds on the clock. Tommy Wilson keeps it himself. Now pitches it late. Spearman. Takes on the tackler at about the 45, gets out to the 47 or 48-yard line. So a game of about five or six on the play. And it'll be third down, and let's we'll see where they spot it. At least three. Yep, third down of three. Ball at the 47 for the Bobcats. Yeah, last week at the game at Benedictine Docks, where you weren't able to make it, the Colton Spearman uh, and I broadcast it. And there was a shock the way that game started out. They were watching scores in northwest Missouri. Number one, the country was trailing Pittsburgh State 28 to nothing at one time before they lost that game. Came back, and I think 38-17 was the final in that game. But, yeah, it's the Gorillas. And Northwest Missouri dropped all the way to number 10 in the rankings with that loss. Tommy Wilson in the gun, and he throws it. He's got it. Robinson, it's complete to the freshman tight end down inside the 50. And, Daryl, that is a combination we may be seeing a few times in the next few years. The freshman to freshman from Wilson to Robinson, both from California, and a first down, a big first down pitch and catch for the Bobcats. Oh, wasn't that Pittman? Wasn't that 80 or was that? I thought that was uh, 89, which was Andrew Robinson out there. But... No, we believe yeah. Pittman. Pittman, Pittman another yeah. another freshman. Uh-huh. Freshman out of Omaha West Side with that catch, Malik Pittman. Back to pass is Tommy Williams. Wilson, Tommy Wilson. He's got Aaron Smith at the 20, 35, down to the 30, wide open. And Smith is going to drag tacklers down to about the 29-yard line. So a nice catch to Aaron Smith from Tommy Wilson. And the Bobcats are down inside the 30. You know, talking about Andy Robinson last week against Benedictine, there was some success. The Bobcats had some success thrown to him. And Benedictine had him triple covered at time during the afternoon uh, just to prevent him from getting the ball. Aaron Smith, a little bit gimpy, leaving the field. Eric Morrison Smith takes his play, split to the wide side. The Bobcats are going west to east, right to left here in the second quarter. It's just Thurman on the outside, breaks one tackle. Now it's going to be taken down about the 22 or 23 yard line. Nice read by Tommy Wilson on the option. It's going to be a gain of about five. They're going to say it's just a 24. It'll be second down and five for the Bobcats. Cruz State started this drive on their own 40. Seventh play of the drive coming up. 
They're in the eye formation. Tommy Wilson under center. Gets the snap. Keeps it himself and no call. He had to grab by the face mask and spun around and tackled. It was six officials on the field. Nobody saw the face mask. That was similar to the one I remember with, with uh, at Kansas State when Nebraska still in the Big 12. There was a tackle like that toward the end of the game. Uh, against, and that wasn't called in. Uh, I don't remember who knew where his Nebraska's quarterback was. was Eric Crouch. Who got, oh, that's right. Yeah, and his head was backwards in the pictures yeah. even, and it wasn't called. Third down and uh, four for the Bobcats. Tommy Wilson under center, fakes the handoff, back to pass. It's batted down. So the Cats will be the ball at the 23. It'll be a 40-yard field goal attempt for Drake Conry. So Conry hit a 40-yarder against Benedictine last week. We'll get a shot at another 40-yarder today. Marshall Plants will be the holder. Alan Barnes, the snapper, he will spot it right at the 30-yard line for a 40-yard attempt. Snap is high. Klontz gets it down, but the timing was messed up, and it is no good. As the snap came back high, Klontz did a nice job of putting the ball down, but was unable to connect, and so Conry goes down with a missed field goal, but not much he could do about that. Taking over on their own 23 on downs is Avila. 7.34 remaining in the second quarter. Proof stayed up 7-3. Proof stayed on the road today. Second consecutive week after having five of six games to start the season at the Oak Bowl. Well, and that was really deserved because, you know, 14 consecutive games away from the Oak Bowl when there was construction from the fall of 2012 to the fall of 14. Red Bob, all by himself in the backfield with five wide receivers. Now Alan Jackson comes into motion, and they hand it to him. Bobcats read it well, but Jackson still on his own gets about five yards. It's like Briar Burr in on the tackle for the Bobcats. Second down and five. Went right back to the line of scrimmage. Bruce State with 185 total yards so far in the game. Not been over 300 this year, so well on the way here. Seven minutes left in the second quarter. Avila looks to the sideline to get the play call. Need to get it out to about the 33. The pass is complete to Lewis, and Darbo Collins just can't quite corral him and taking him out of bounds. It's going to be Jordan Stephan out near the 40 yard line. It'll be another first down for the Eagles. Yeah, Avila comes immediately to the line. Almost looks like they're going to go on a quick count, but then they stop and they look at the sideline and get the call. First down and 10 for the Eagles on their own 39-yard line. Jordan Rabbi, the quarterback's gone the distance, the freshman out of Thornton, Colorado, looking long for Lewis and just overthrows him, running step-for-step step with him with Logan Payton and Jordan Stephan coming over to help out. So that was going to have to be put in an absolutely perfect spot. Didn't quite get there, and big coverage by two Bobcats on the play. It'll be second down and 10 for the Eagles. After that loss last week, Northwest Missouri State out of Fort Hayes State, the Doe State, and a former opponent of the Bobcats, Minnesota Mankato, was the number one Division II team in the country. You know, uh, Fort Hayes State was the only team that had beaten Pittsburgh State before last week. Trips to the near side, twins to the far side. Now Alan Jackson comes in motion, has the ball handed to him. And is going to be taken down. They're trying to wrestle the ball from him. His forward motion is going to be out to about the 44, forward progress. And he's going to be looking at third down and five. Coming in for the Bobcats was John Drager. And also in on the tackle, uh, Gunnar Orca, the freshman out of Millard North, did some action here this afternoon. Yeah, Gunnar had an, had an assisted tackle last week for the Bobcats and had a solo tackle the week before. Gunner getting a shot this afternoon for the Cats. Third down and six as we go under six minutes in the second quarter. Pass complete to Davion Sullivan. He's got the first down out to the down to about the 40 yard line of Bruce State. Or cut and Logan Payton in on the tackle. So it'll be another first down for the Eagles, and they'll have the ball at the Bruce State 40 as they come up to the line of scrimmage. Snaps already. Penalty flags all over the place. 
It's going to be completed to Josh Lewis, but I think it's going to come back. It's a touchdown. We'll see. The 40-yard touchdown if it stands. But we had two flags on the play, and it's going to be offside on Chris Page. It will stand. A pass complete from Jordan Radbaugh to Josh Lewis. There's one of those big plays, the 40-yard touchdown pass for the Eagles. Well, I thought it looked like when the flags were thrown, Peru State kind of froze, like as if they thought the play had been called dead, and it allowed the wide receiver to get in behind the Peru State secondary. In comes Sullivan to attempt the extra point. Or Spencer, excuse me, Danny Spencer to attempt the extra point. That snap, but Herbeck gets it down, the kick is up. It's good. 537 remaining in the second quarter. Avalon now leads it 10 to 7. We'll be back with more after this time out. This is the Bobcat Football with B103 Sports. Welcome back to Avila University. Bruce State on the road against the Avila Eagles. Avila takes their first lead of the afternoon with 537 remaining in the second quarter on a 40-yard touchdown pass from Jordan Radbaugh to Josh Lewis. Now Malik Pittman stands at about the 10. Logan Pavin back near the goal line. Pittman's going to receive it at about right at the goal line. He's out to the 10. He's to the 15, cuts it upfield. Going to be taken down all back about the 17 yard line. He ran a long way, Daryl, for 17 yards. Well, he did. He got it on the far side of the field and cut up the middle of the field before he was tackled. But he had to field that ball. He caught it on about the one yard line just outside, and so he had to run with it. Uh, if it had been a little bit longer, he could have made a decision maybe to stay in the end zone. But the first state's going to start deep in our own territory. Looks like they're going to spot it at the 19. Bloodman split to the near side. Looks like Marshall Quantz back in at quarterback. Back to pass on first down. He's looking for Floodman on the double move. Floodman down deep, and he is knocked down. Unbelievable. No flag on that one. Floodman was coming back to the ball, and the defensive back for Avila, Malcolm Sesse, put his hands right in his chest and pushed him down. That's what you call great coverage if they don't call it. That's absolutely. Second down and 10 for the Bobcats. Ball on the 19-yard line. Ludman had a nice double move in his mind, but the ball underthrown a little bit by Quantz. Coming back to try to get it. Sesse knocked him to the ground. Second down and 10. Ball's pitched to Spearman to the far side. He's taken down after a gain of maybe a yard. Good quickness by the linebacker on that side. With 9.31 to go in the fourth quarter, uh, Kansas State just scored now up 23-0 over Texas, 11.05 in the fourth quarter. Nebraska records remain 35-17, Nebraska. Actually, the defensive end, um, KC Mormon. It'd be great being named KC down here. You could have yeah, a <laughs> shirt everything with your name on. Yeah, what do you need to cost you extra? Third down. They did spot it right at the line of scrimmage. Third down and 10, ball in the 19. Merrill in the slot. Freak slips to the near side. And the gun is Klontz back to pass. And out of bounds. And this time, I think it's going to be defensive holding. The ball was thrown out of bounds. But I believe it's going to be defensive holding on Avila. Let's see. It could be an eligible receiver downfield, but my guess is defensive holding on the Eagles. Pass interference, actually which is just as good. First down for the Bobcats. Uh, first down they really needed at this point. Now will move it out to the 34-yard line. Yeah, that ball, I, I guess I'm more with you, Doc, on a holding call because that, to me, was an uncatchable ball. And the pass interference surprises. So first down and 10 for the Cats, following their own 34-yard line. Morrison Smith at the fullback. In the beer formation, the halfbacks, both Spearman and Trombley in the game. 
Oh, it's under center. Now Spearman or Charlie goes in the motion. They hand it to Derek Morrison Smith. He's got a first down right up the middle out to about the 48-yard line. That was a gain of 14 on first down. Derek Morrison Smith, another one of the California players from near San Diego. Just a junior. Another year for him. That's not that. First down and 10 for the Cats, all on their own 48-yard line. 420 remaining here in the second quarter. Cats down 10 to 7 and driving. Under center is Quas. He gives it to Eric Morrison Smith, and he's got a gain of about four inside the 50 down to the 48 yard line. It'll be second down and six for the Cats. And Avalon, they're all really substituting very heavily on defense. Almost every play, there's two or three players swapping out for the Eagles, trying to keep them fresh. And they don't have a lot of players on the sideline. Not a real deep squad over here. They've suffered a lot of injuries this year as well. Take it down in six. Quant hands it to Morrison Smith. He's down to about the 45. It's going to be third down and three for the Cats. Yeah, both got one on a tackle. To, I mean, on a block that allowed that game. Wyatt Beebe, the freshman linebacker out of Nixa at the bottom of the pile. And it'll be third down. The ball's at the 46. They need to get to the 42 of Avila. So third down and about four to go. Quant will be under center. German goes into motion. Eric Morrison Smith gets about three of the four he needed, but a nice tackle by Wyatt Beebe. And the Bobcats keep the offense on the field. Under three minutes to go. The ball is at the 40, between the 43 and the 44, and they need to get it to the 42. So fourth down and a long one or short two. Brent Jensen, another freshman, a tight end. Uh, came in for Marcus Spearman to bring in the play. Elite Pittman split to the far side. Two tight ends in the eye formation. Trombley is the eye back. Quads keeps it, pitches it to Trombley, and he falls forward from the first down, I believe. We'll see where the spot is. It was a great effort. It is a first down. Nate Trombley was hit two yards short of the first down, spun and drove his way to the first down, and the Cats have it. First down and 10 at about the 41-yard line. Yeah, his linesman had called first down, and the, uh, the referee ran up and signaled as well, so the chains were being moved, and a big first down for Peru State. Cats move the chains. 2.15 remaining in the second quarter. Gutsy call. Fourth down and two is Coach Schneider. Shows faith in the offense. They go forth, they make it, and the Cats now have it. First down and 10 as we go under two minutes. Back to packs. His quants on first down. He's in trouble. And he is sacked back at the 48-yard line. On the sack is Casey Mormon again, the defensive end. And now the Bobcats, I believe, oh, Avila's going to take it. Uh, Bobcats are going to take a timeout. The referee changes his line. We'll take it with him. 151 to go. Crew State down 10-7. We'll be back after this timeout. You're listening to the Bobcat football on B103 Sports. Welcome back to Avila. Minute 51 remaining in the second quarter. Proof State second down at 17 on the Avila 48-yard line. Aaron Smith has it on the trap, and he gets about three. It's going to be third down and about 14 to go. <laughs> and Avila is going to take another timeout. So Avila wants the ball back. It'll be third down and 14 when we get back. We'll take a timeout with them. You are listening to Bobcat Football and B103 Sports.
Yeah. Welcome back to Avila. Bruce State looking at third down and 13. Now with a minute 40 remaining, they are at the 45-yard line of the Eagles. Trailing this game 10 to 7. Marshall Fonts will be in the gun. He's got Aaron Smith standing by on two receivers to the far side, one to the near side. Fonts back to pass. Steps up in the pocket, throws it underneath. Robinson has it. He's going to be just short of the first down at about the 33-yard line. And immediately, Lee Davila is going to take another timeout. No, Bruce State's going to take the timeout and talk about it. So, Daryl, we'll go ahead and keep it here with a minute 31 left. Avila took two timeouts, and now the Bobcats have fourth down and three from the 3-4. They may have been doing the Cats a favor. Yeah, okay. if Bruce State's able to get this fourth down conversion, it certainly would be. Uh, Eric Morrison Smith carried the ball several times in that last drive, but the folks over in the stats booth must have some difficulty with that. They call it unknown carrier. You got that down also for Trombley and Tommy Wilson as well. That's right. Yeah. Talk about being anonymous. <laughs> Ellen uh, Jackson, 31 yards on the day. You think he'll do the halftime show? I was hoping so. I've always liked <laughs> Alan Jackson. Fourth down and two. All at the 34-yard line as we come out of the timeout. Launch shock information. He's back to pass. Short pass, and it's complete to A.J. Flynn. down. And he's got the first down as they move the chains. So the Bobcats get a fresh set of downs, and Avila gave them two timeouts on the drive. Yeah, Bruce State's only victory this year is over ranked friends. Friends upset the number one team in the KCAC last week, uh, defeating Tabor, and Friends now leads Bethany 7 to nothing. Punch, a play action, back to pass. He's in trouble, and he goes down. Clear back at the 37-yard line. A little bit of a late hit. Uh, Marshall Clance was laying on the ground, and a defensive lineman came up and jumped him after the play was done, but but no call. It wasn't any, just any defensive lineman. It was Demetrius Mosley. It was 5'10", 290. <laughs> a lot of linemen. Yeah, that might have hurt. 47 seconds left. Clance back to pass. He's got Merrill, who gets out of bounds at about the 32 or 33-yard line. Yeah, so, 41 seconds to go. Uh, Bruce State inside the, inside the 30. So about the 33-yard oh, line. Yeah, yeah, right. 50-yarder from here, which would be testing, I believe, a little bit of the leg of Greg Connery. So 41 seconds. The Cats need some real estate here to give Connery a shot to tie this thing going into halftime. Yeah, that sack was very unfortunate for the Bobcat offense. Took them out of potentially out of field goal territory. Split backs by Quans. Back to pass on third down. Now runs a shovel pass to Trombley. He's inside the 30, down to about the 28. It's going to be a 45 yard field goal attempt. And we've seen him practice several times, Connery being able to make him from the 45 yard line. But as of now, the kick team hasn't come onto the field. Mark Quans still on the field. 22 seconds, 20 seconds in ticking. I think they're going to let it roll down so the last play of the half will be the field goal attempt. It'll be a 45-yarder, roughly. We'll see where they actually spot it. Yeah, it was very fortunate for Peru State uh, if this field goal was successful, but Avila did take those timeouts. Three seconds remaining. The Bobcats are going to take a timeout. 15 plays on the drive. They started at their own 19 with 529 remaining in the second quarter, and they've run off the whole rest of the second quarter. So take a look here at some some numbers. Cats with 223 total yards. I think probably the best half of the season, 188 for Avila. And an update from uh, Lincoln, Nebraska, now 42-17 over Rutgers. Nebraska 6-1 and one in the season so far. Rutgers at 5-2. and two. You know, That game, when they played it 90 years ago, was actually the old Gold Knights versus the Scarlet Knights. <laughs> well, the interesting thing, too, on Rutgers, remember when Nebraska was upset by Syracuse in the 84 season, and Nebraska was number one the next week, Rutgers defeated Syracuse, and a lot of the media was saying Rutgers is number one. <laughs> Connery lines up right between the hash marks, right at the 35-yard line. It'll be a 45-yard attempt. 
Here comes the snap from Barnes. It's good. The placement's good. Connery's kick is long enough. And it is good! Peyton Connery hits the 45-yard field goal at the buzzer. We go into halftime tight, 10 to 10. We'll be back with our halftime show after this timeout. You're listening to Bobcat Football on B103 Sports. 